Did cultures in ancient times interact with visitors from parallel universes who influenced their art? Some of these ancient carvings, paintings, and artifacts seem to depict a world that doesn't really match with our own historical records. I mean, what does this cave art look like it's depicting? If you were to ask me, I'd say someone had just watched a bunch of Bob Lazar documentaries and then decided to paint some aliens onto some rocks. The thing is, these cave paintings are tens of thousands of years old. These are depictions of what are called Wanjinas by ancient tribes in Australia. These tribes found in the Kimberley region of northwestern Australia have culture and traditions that have been alive for at least 60,000 years, maybe even older. The Wanjinas were described as sky beings or spirits from the clouds who came down from the Milky Way during dream time. They created the earth and all its inhabitants. The legend goes that these beings spent some time on earth creating, teaching, and being gods to the aboriginal people. Eventually, the Wanjinas disappeared. Some descended into the earth, while others returned to the sky and can be seen at night as moving lights. So, you know, by the sounds of that, maybe the alien connection isn't that far off after all. I find this super fascinating because, I mean, damn, these things really do look like your classic bulging-eyed, light-skinned gray that 90% of alien encounters are described looking like. So, did these beings really exist? Were they entities from deep in space or a parallel universe, or is this all just very coincidental? Are these ancient Indian rock paintings depicting visitors from space or another realm? One archaeologist definitely thinks so. Back in July of 2014, the State Department of Archaeology and Culture reached out to the Indian Space Research Organization for help with some ancient rock paintings found in caves near Charama and the Kankar district. Archaeologist J.R. Bhagat has been studying these rock paintings and believes they could be around 10,000 years old, which is pretty insane because some of these things look a lot like the types of sci-fi aliens we imagine today. Bagat thinks these cave paintings depict extraterrestrials and UFOs. You've got large humanoid figures that look like they're descending from the sky, some with what look like helmets or antenna, and a disc-shaped craft with three rays coming from in space. It's kind of hard to look at some of these things and see anything else but aliens and UFOs. And as if it couldn't get any more uncanny, locals have told stories passed down from generation to generation about beings known as the Rohala people, which translates to the small sized ones. But according to these legends, the Rohala people would come down from the sky and round flying objects and whisk away villagers who would never be seen again. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? The Abydos carvings have been a hot topic of debate for years. Found in the ancient temple of Seti I in Abydos, Egypt, among your usual hieroglyphs and carvings, there's a set of strange images that really do look like modern day aircraft and vehicles. I mean, take a look at these things. One kind of looks like a helicopter. Some say the one on the top right there looks like a submarine. I kind of see a yacht myself. Below that, you have what looks like a jet plane or an advanced spacecraft of some kind, perhaps. It's easy to see why there are a lot of wild theories about these carvings. One of the most popular theories is that these carvings are a sign that there could have been advanced technology in ancient Egypt, possibly influenced by extraterrestrials. That aliens visited Earth thousands of years ago and shared their technology with the ancient Egyptians. So the Egyptians were just carving what they saw onto the temple walls. Again, if this really was the case, who were these beings? Were they aliens from a distant world, or were they people visiting from far in the future or a parallel universe? One of the most famous and mysterious artifacts of the ancient Maya is this sarcophagus lid right here. This is the lid of Pakal the Great's sarcophagus, found in the Temple of Inscriptions in Mexico. Pakal was a powerful Mayan king who ruled from 615 to 683 AD. When his tomb was discovered, the carvings on his sarcophagus lid had archaeologists pretty confused. The lid shows Pakal in a strange pose lying on his back, surrounded by all these intricate carvings of what really looks like complex machinery. It kind of looks like he's sitting in some kind of cockpit with his hands on controls and like his feet operating pedals. It kind of looks like there's a bit of smoke also billowing out the sides. Some think it looks like he's piloting a spacecraft or at least some sort of highly advanced piece of machinery for the time. So what was this meant to depict? Did the ancient Mayans have access to technology we have no 
physical knowledge of, and could this piece and others like it somehow have crossed over from another reality where there was advanced technology like this back then? Who knows? The Piri Reis map is incredibly weird. It's an old map made way back in 1513 by an Ottoman admiral named Piri Reis. What's so mysterious about it though? Well, it shows parts of the world that shouldn't have been known about back then. Like Antarctica drawn also without ice. And everything is drawn with a surprising amount of accuracy. Many historians have looked at the map, or what's left of it, which is only about a third. And most agree that it just doesn't seem like something that could have been made at the time. So uh, there are all sorts of conspiracy theories about how Piri Reis would have made the map. Some say he had access to ancient maps from Atlantis or some other lost civilization. And you know what I'm gonna say? next. Was there some help from an advanced visitor or visitors? It's impossible to say. All we can do is ponder how this guy seemed to know so much about places that wouldn't get explored fully until many centuries later. Off to Scotland now, we have the Cockno Stone. The Cockno Stone is this huge rock in Scotland covered in all kinds of weird carvings. The stone is about 5,000 years old, and it's covered in these swirling patterns, circles, and strange symbols. One of the coolest things about this stone is that it's massive, about 42 by 26 feet, all covered in what is essentially ancient graffiti. And as for what the carvings mean, no one knows, but some archaeologists think they might be maps of the stars or some kind of astronomical calendar of some kind. They could also be religious symbols, or there could be messages on here from something. Perhaps even ancient aliens? Yeah, again, some people think aliens could have had a hand in making these carvings. Speaking of graffiti, by the way, the stone actually had to be buried in 1965 because young hooligans just wouldn't stop messing with it. Does this thing look like it's from ancient Egypt to you? I honestly thought I was looking at the steering wheel of an old tractor or something, but this object was found in 1936 in the tomb of an ancient Egyptian named Sabu. For this reason, this weird object has been referred to as the Disk of Sabu. So what the hell is it exactly? Well, your guess is as good as mine and apparently as good as most historians or archeologists because they're not sure either. Of course, they can make more educated guesses than us, but the only definitive thing you can say is that this thing looks very out of place. There are strange circular structures in parts of the Middle East, often referred to as wheels. They're found in spots in Syria and Saudi Arabia. They're kind of like big stone wheels set into the desert, and they're super old, about 2,000 years or even older. And much like the famous Nazca lines, which we've talked about plenty of times on the channel, they can only be viewed from above and nobody is exactly sure what their purpose was. The wheels weren't really noticed until the 20s when airplanes came around. From the ground, they're hard to spot. I mean, you could see that there are stones there, but you obviously don't get the full picture until you're up high looking down. So why were they made if they couldn't really be appreciated back then? Well, some people think the artists didn't make them for themselves or the people around them, but for beings they believed were looking down at them from the skies. Who were these beings? Was there religious stuff involved here, or did they have uh, some uh, flying friends up above? You tell me. How cool looking are these, right? Ancient depictions of monsters are always fascinating, and I mean, that has to be what these are, right? These sculptures are from ancient Iraq, way back in the Ubaid period, around 4000 BC. They look sort of human, but with undeniably lizard-like features. So are these just imaginative pieces of art, or were the sculptors capturing beings they really saw or even interacted with in real life. They have these long heads, slit-like eyes, and what look to be snouts instead of human mouths. While archaeologists think these figurines could just be symbolic or part of religious beliefs, some also think there could be more to the story. As always, what do you think? The Crucifixion of Christ painting is a famous artwork that shows Jesus nailed to the cross. And this is a scene that's been painted and drawn by artists for centuries, but in one version of this painting, one made by an unknown artist who's been lost to time, something strange seems to be lurking in the background. 
take a look. So you see those flying objects in the back? What do they look like to you? In this 1350 fresco from the Visoki Dekani Monastery in Kosovo, Serbia, there are these weird flying objects in the sky. There are two people seated inside them. Now, something important to note is that this was painted long after the events depicted in the painting, so it's not like whoever made this was drawing exactly what they saw. Obviously, there's a lot of artistic license here, but it was also made long before planes were a thing. So what are these flying things supposed to be? Could there have been visitors flying through the sky at the time the artist was creating the work and he just decided to add them in? It's possible. Also very likely that these are just abstract versions of the sun and moon. But with all of that said, I've been your host James. I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video. Thank you.